Hi, and welcome back. This is Dr. Kaiser from Kaiser Kidney Doc. Today I'll talk to you about how exactly how high blood pressure causes kidney failure on a molecular level. Some people who develop kidney failure actually end up on dialysis. And this machine here is dialysis. So in the United States, high blood pressure is the second most common cause of kidney failure. And in the United States, one out of three people have high blood pressure. Some people might actually think that high blood pressure runs in certain families, but in actuality, it runs in everybody's family. So without further ado, please stay tuned and watch the animation that shows how high blood pressure causes kidney failure. This is the normal kidney. It filters approximately 180 liters per day, which is approximately 125 milliliters per minute. That is approximately 92 liter bottles of blood every day. This is a magnified view of the filter within the kidney, called the glomerulus, and the tubules. This is where toxins are filtered, electrolytes are exchanged, and urine is produced. This is a magnified view of the afferent arteriole, the artery that provides blood to the glomerulus. Every time your heart beats, the left ventricle of the heart pushes blood into these arteries. The pressure of that blood within the arteries that pushes against the arterial wall is your blood pressure. As the blood pressure increases, the walls get thicker and the lumen gets smaller. This is a magnified view of the glomerulus, the filter of the kidney. As the afferent arterial wall thickens, the blood flow to the kidney decreases. Without adequate blood flow, the glomerulus shrinks and starts filtering less. This is the shrunken, hardened kidney of high blood pressure, also called hypertension. The magnified view shows hardened small arteries, also called arteriosclerosis. They used to be large and elastic arteries. Many factors contribute to hypertension, such as high salt, high sugar, stress, overweight, and genetics. When someone has hypertension, all the arteries in the body have become small and hardened. That means all of those affected arteries deliver less blood to your organs, making the organs not work very well. This decreased blood flow may lead to plaques and blockages in the arteries that lead to heart attacks. This decreased blood flow to the heart can make the heart overcompensate by getting bigger leading to heart failure by either not being able to fill properly or not being able to eject blood properly. This decreased blood flow to the brain can lead to areas of your brain not getting enough blood, which can lead to strokes. This decreased blood flow to reproductive organs can cause sexual dysfunction in both men and women.